I mean, foreign terrorists like, you know, Al-Qaeda, who attacked us on 9-11, and domestic terrorists who attack America, they usually have a specific grievance against our nation. case of Al-Qaeda, they attacked us on 9-11, largely because bin Laden was offended that we still had U.S. troops on Saudi soil, and it was he was horrified that we may westernize his little variation of the Muslim world, and he thought that the price of oil was too low, that we were buying from Saudi Arabia. I mean, he ranted about this in 98. Meanwhile, a domestic terrorist, whether they're from the far right or the far left, they very often have specific grievances about something that the government is or is not doing, whether it's left-wing window smashing during WTO meetings or Occupy protests or right-wing bombing attacks in Oklahoma City in the 1996 Olympics. And frankly, I don't think there's that much equivalence there. Uh, one is destruction of property, the other is killing people. But nonetheless, there's always some underlying grievance that the perpetrators have, although we could, we, you know, we could go back to the weather underground. There were people killed. When it comes to right-wing extremist attacks in particular, and arguably, if you go back to the weather underground, the left-wing attacks, the grievance against America was almost always related to this meme of big government, the state's too powerful, too much government. But where's that really coming from? I mean, when Eric Rudolph, in 1996, the Olympic bombing, bomber, when he was finally captured, he shed some light on why he did the bombings. He said he thought that the Olympics, this is the guy, remember Richard Jewell? He was falsely accused of this. I was in Atlanta when this happened. It was, in fact, it was, that was why the Georgia Police Academy opened themselves to, to civilians and and uh, DeWitt Wanamaker and I went through, you know, took a class there, and I got licensed as a private detective and a badge and everything. Um, but <laughs> anyhow, uh, Rudolph said that he thought that the Olympics, by bringing together athletes from throughout the world on an equal basis, promoted, his words, the despicable ideals of global socialism, end quote. Socialism, what do you do? Of course you blow up the Olympics. I mean, come on, isn't it obvious? How many times a day does some talking head in the right-wing media or the blogosphere or on right-wing talk radio try to argue that America is turning into a socialist country or that we have a socialist president or that Harry Reid is a socialist or that, you know... How many times a day do they argue that big government is the cause of all of our nation's problems? Fear of a big, bad government edging towards record levels in the use. Everybody's up in arms. This speech today was an ode to big government. It was a hymn to big government. This speech was a declaration in the era of big government is back. I'm the man who will do it. We've stagnated into an economy that has taken all that hope right down the slope and has left millions without jobs, forced out of their homes by foreclosure herded into dependency upon a government that promises us candy, but gives us cavities. Now, I'm pretty sure that was Megyn Kelly, uh, what's his name with the German name? Krauthammer, Charles Krauthammer, and then and Mike Huckabee, yeah. Uh, big government. Big government the, is the constant enemy of right-wingers, particularly those who are often funded by billionaires. I mean, speaking about Hillary Clinton, Dick Armey once said, quote, Hillary Clinton bothers me a lot. I realized the other day that her thoughts sound a lot like Karl Marx. She hangs around a lot of Marxists. All her friends are Marxists, end quote. I didn't know, frankly, that Dick Army had ever read Karl Marx. I'm impressed. And then there's Charles Koch, who's speaking back in October 2012, said that, quote, I think it's scary that this administration, with this administration, that is fundamentally dedicated to transforming this country, and that means bigger and bigger government, more intrusive, less productivity, less opportunity, and who does that hurt the most? Hurts the poorest people. End quote. Right, this billionaire is really worried about the poorest people. But the problem is that the poorest people hear that. And sadly, think maybe there's some truth to it. And while some billionaire backers of the right who speak ill about the government are bad enough, the meme that big government is the cause of all our problems is perpetuated each and every day in the right-wing media. Billionaires don't want big government. Because when government stops funding the commons, things like schools, hospitals, water, power systems, then billionaires can grab those natural monopolies and squeeze more and more money out of working people. 
I mean, while all the talk by the billionaires and corporate, you know, the corporate right, basically, and the right-wing media about big government might be good for massive transnational corporations and the wealthy elite, it has shaken the people's confidence in America and in the idea of Lincoln's government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Let's not forget, the founders of our country fought and died so we could have the type of government that we do. They fought and died for a government that looked out for all of the people, rich and poor. And we used to believe in our form of government. And now it's attacked daily by right-wingers on the radio, the web, the television, and in Congress. And while they attack our form of government, they freak out when someone mentions the decades of violence that have been dumped on us by people who hated or were afraid of the government. Anti-government talk, when in the abstract, is corrosive, and it activates the crazies to come out of the woodwork and unleash violence in our society. When anti-government talk is specific, if we're going to talk about drones or spying or torture or taxes, that's a good thing. That's an important dialogue. That's democracy in a republic. But when these demagogues use big government as a slur, we shouldn't be surprised to see right-wing extremists turn violent.